Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Keller Williams Realty Technologies Community Weekly Webinar. So excited to have you all with us today. You can see what is on our agenda. Um, it is September 23rd. Happy Friday to each and every one of you. My name is Kevin Weber, and I am your host for today's presentation. We also have a special guest joining us uh, in just a moment uh, to talk about Dot Loop mobile app. So we're going to hear all about that. The latest and greatest eEdge updates. We have a great update for the Ambassador Membership Program. Did you all know it's Realtor Safety Month? I need to fix that on the screen. It's actually Realtor Safety Month, not Realtor Safety Week. And then uh, upcoming events. So let's get started. We're going to get started with our special guest talking about the Dot Loop mobile app. My good friend uh, Hunter Morgan from, from Dot Loop is on the line. Hunter is the director of training at Dot Loop. I like Hunter a lot. He performs a lot of fun professional presentations to end users nationwide in a, diver, a, a diverse um, setting, such as webinars and even on site personalized training. Hunter is here to demonstrate the Dot Loop mobile app. So, Hunter, I am going to give you presentation opportunities now. You are now the presenter, and feel free to take over. All right, thank you very much, Kevin, and welcome everybody to the webinar. Again, my name is Hunter Morgan. I'm the director of training here at Dot Loop. I would like to just take a few minutes for a high level overview of the Dot Loop app. If you did not know, we have a free app available to anyone. It is on iOS and Android, which is what you should be seeing here on my screen. And Kevin, can you confirm that that's coming through okay for me? Looks awesome. Thank you. You sound okay. great, too. Great. So I'm going to start off. And, and I am uh, particular to iOS devices, so for the Android folks, I'm, I'll come to that second, but I want to show you around on iOS first. So on the left, you'll see my phone mirrored to my computer. Here's the Dot Loop app. Of course, if you're an iOS user, you go to the App Store, uh, type in Dot Loop, download it for free, and then you'll click on that smiley face there, and it will actually ask you to sign in. So you'll have a couple of screens. I'm already signed in you'll have a couple of screens that you'll need to skip through and then you'll sign in with your email address and password so this is a Keller Williams specific topic in that a lot of Keller Williams agents don't know they can log in to dot loop directly on their browser by going to dot loop com and when they try to do that a lot of them think that their eEdge password is going to be the same right if you're on desktop okay so this isn't the app this is desktop uh, you can log in here, but you might have to retrieve your password if you've never logged in anywhere aside from eEdge. And the same goes, I mentioned this because the same goes for the app. So as you're teaching agents how to download and get access to their loops in their pocket on the app, you might need to mention that they, you know, they'll retrieve and create a password um, on that sign-in page on desktop. All right, but once you get logged Yes, is there a question? Quick question, yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt. A question came in, and I think it needs to be clarified because a few of them are coming in. Um, when we're talking about the password, if they were to change that, would that, uh, would that cause any problems to their current dot .loop login? No. Um, or the MyKW login, I guess is a better question. The yeah. access to dot .loop from MyKW. No. Okay, great. It's separate which is why they would need to click that forget pass, forgot password link to set it up because they never have before. They've been pre-provisioned uh, through eEdge and they have that single sign-on so there really has never been a password created directly under their dot loop sign-in. Excellent. And, you'll, and, and so just keep that in mind is in general, right? It's always good to know how to log in directly. Now uh, on the left we're looking at the iOS app on my iPhone 7 on the right. Um, I have an Android tablet, and we're going to go over here to the Apple side, and I'm just going to open up this loop here called 9402 Boulder Road. So I'll click on that, and what you see here is if there's a picture added, you're going to see it just like you do on the desktop version, and there's a similar layout. We have documents. We have service providers, which are optional, which you may or may not have added in your account. We have people, those are the people that you've added to this specific loop, like clients and agents, and then we have the tasks. So the familiar dot loop that you're used to on desktop, it's laid out the same here on iOS, but due to the limited real estate, pun intended, we have had to consolidate some of the buttons, and you're not going to have every feature that you're used to on 
desktop. In other words, in the upper right hand corner here, if I click this little drop down, I'm going to see activity log, messages, the detail section, the ability to submit for review. All that's been consolidated in this little drop down up here on the right. If we go back to the home page where all of our loops are, we also have consolidation up here in this drop down. Switch from grid to list view. Uh, our sorting options, our filter options are all housed right up here underneath that little drop down and then the plus sign is where you would go to create a new loop here. Now the global navigation bar so on on the desktop you know you're used to having your charts and people and tasks and um, template section all up here in this bar but on the app you're gonna have this little button over here on the left on iOS or you can swipe your screen from left to right to see global loops, tasks, people, and templates. And then to sign out of the app if you have multiple accounts or you need to sign in or out, um, there is the settings and it's right down here at the bottom. And I'm pretty sure it's the same on the Android but we'll go over there in a second to confirm. Um, Here's some common questions that I get during training, and I don't really, we don't really hold a whole lot of you know on-site, app-specific training, but I do like to throw some of the the features of the app in there, just sort of a as a wow factor or to get more people to download and use the app. Because as an agent myself, there is a lot of value in having all of these loops in your pocket, you know, with a click of a button from your home screen. Open it up, I can pop into Boulder Road, and I can share, view edit these documents, I can add people. So um, I recently did a deal actually representing myself as an agent. We just closed yesterday. Um, Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And you know I use I use dot loop of course and I use it a lot though more and more on the app. So for example I wrote up a contract and I needed to make a change to it and we were getting ready to go out for, for a happy hour with some friends and my wife's like, aren't you going to bring your computer? I'm like, no, I can open it up here you know, over a beer and in two seconds change the price, clear signatures and reshare it out. So, now, Hunter, I think it's important also to mention to the, to the group that you're also an agent. So you're not only looking at this as a, as a client, you're actually looking at this and utilizing it as an agent in your own transaction. Isn't that correct? Correct. And that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that because as a client, you don't have to have the app to sign from your phone. When when I share a document to you, as a uh, you know as a as an agent to a client, you're actually able to just open up whatever app it is on your phone as the client, and then you'll click the link from there, and it'll open up whatever your preferred browser is, whether that be Google or you know on on iOS devices Safari, and you're going to have a mobile optimized experience signing as a client. So clients don't have to ever download the app. Um, you know, to interact or to sign documents from their phone. Excellent. Now I want to make sure our, t our group is clear on hearing that this is a agent specific tool, not necessarily to share with your clients after you they've agreed to be in the loop. Now, another thing that happened, and this is actually today, I needed to submit a bank um, deposit to my office to show that I paid the transaction fee you know for this deal that I, I rep represented myself on and rather than drive back to the office to hand them that slip or, or find a scanner I'm able to use dot loops scan in feature so to the right of each folder of the loop there is a plus button and what I can do is just click the plus and let, let me back up I'm gonna try to point with my mouse to show you what I'm clicking there's a little plus sign here that's how you add documents to that folder and you have your traditional means add from your template section um, or you know bring in via Dropbox or you know bring in via email but there's now this on the app and now on the Android as well a scan a document feature so I'd actually click on this it'll pull up my phone's camera and it'll ask you to request access and this is the actual slip that I had to send in today but I'll take a picture of it and if you have it on a, a nice contrasting background uh, it will auto crop it for you and or you can you can click this and you can crop it yourself by drawing in the, the uh, corners right and I actually just messed it up there but anyhow <laughs> you get the point um, and then you can add this to the loop and you can even drop signatures on it so just a, a, a nice feature to have on the go I actually used this on the last offer I made as well I went into the MLS and the disclosures weren't there. 
Uh, and I called the agent and I said, hey, can I get a copy? She said, they should be in the MLS. I said, they're not. Well, long story short, we went and, and did a walkthrough of the property and there was a laminated copy or, or a copy in a booklet. And so what I did was I just took out my scan feature and I took a picture of each one and I had them signed before I left the house. Um, yeah, just super convenient stuff like that. That's really what the app's all about. I get questions during training all the time about wh what do you suggest, the app or the desktop? What do you... You know, what do you think we should? What do you suggest we use? And I say both because, you know, the app's not going to have every feature, and there's going to be some things that that aren't easy to do on the app. Just the nature of using a, a small smartphone, you know, to to re actually read over this, you know, you gotta you're going to have to zoom in. It's just the nature of small handheld devices. Um, so I would I prefer to work on my desktop when I'm actually sitting down to put together an offer packet or or you know, working on a bunch of listing documents. But when I've already modified a document and all I want to do is go in and, you know, change something or strike through something or drop a quick signature on the bottom of something, then, yeah, the app is perfectly suited for that. I can click the plus sign down here in the bottom left. I can click uh, add initial. Just click with my thumb to place wherever I want it or whatever, whichever finger you prefer to, to press your screen with there. And then I can assign these to anyone in this loop and I can either save at the bottom and then go ahead and share it which sends out a traditional email just as if you were on your desktop version or I can do the host in person signing so up here in the upper right hand corner you click this drop down host in person signing this would be like if Tammy's right next to me my client I would choose Tammy click the submit button in the upper right here and the nice thing about this is I'll click begin signing or I'll hand my device over to Tammy and she'll click begin signing is this closes the app down it opens up the browser on your smartphone or tablet or whatever you're using and it takes them right to the document so now Tammy's standing there holding my phone or tablet and she clicks start it takes her where she needs to sign she clicks in it she adopts and signs she has the option to create a password if she wants but the document is back with me. That's all it took. Um, and I can just close down the browser, go back to dot loop, and that document will be signed. If and you've that's ever call uh, host in person signing on the desktop, is that right? Exactly. But what you'll notice is if you've ever um, sorry, my Android on the right time now, so I want to get that pulled back up. But if you've ever signed on did a host in person signing on desktop, you'll remember or you'll recall that you get signed out of your account. If you do a host in person signing on desktop, it signs you out and, and then it brings that experience that I just showed you on mobile where your client needs to sign. So the problem with doing it on desktop if you're using one browser is you have to sign in and out of your account. Whereas if you're doing it on mobile, it just opens a browser window and you can hop between browser and app very quickly. Very right, cool. Let's go back to our home page here. Um, what else might I want to show you on? You have about one more minute. Oh, well, then we better switch over to Android. So, and actually, before we do that, let me pull up this little graphic here. Um, the other thing is that you have to understand with apps and Android versus iOS is there, it's a different operating system, and we have different teams working on them because we, we hire you know specialized developers for each one. So... Android just came out um, here at Dot Loop. For a year and a half or more, it's been iOS only. Um, but now we're putting a lot of time into Android. But what you'll see here is that we don't that even the desktop versus iOS and Android, they don't all match up perfectly. Um, so if we go down to uh, strike through, for example, right now the iOS app does not allow you to strike through something, but I can tell you that's coming out in the next couple weeks. We've already submitted that to Apple, um, you know, on the next update. So when you're playing around with either app, if something, if it feels like you can't do something, that might actually be the case. There's no facts out, you know, split and rotate may be missing from, you know, either one. So just keep in mind that that stuff is not always going to be there. Um, so that said, um, I could do the same thing that I just showed you on Android for the most part, but um, you just need to get in and play around with it. It's not difficult. It's, it's very, very easy. You can see mirroring this here, we have 
menu to the left to the left. So if I click on that, it, it's, it has a very similar feel to what I just showed you um, on the Apple. And I'm just going to turn the Apple one off there. All right, so if we jump into 9402 Boulder, again, we have picture, we have documents, and I click the plus sign in the bottom right, and I have the scan feature, add from templates, add from device, add from email, and so on. So without going through everything I just showed you, I guess I would leave it there since I'm probably over my time anyway. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin any questions? Um, yeah, so first of all, that is completely awesome, and I can't wait for my next transaction so I can use it pretty much exclusively. I'm super excited, so thank you for that. It's really great. A couple questions regarding compliance. Um, can the admin get access to the broker dashboard? I, I'm guessing David and Seamus are asking the same question. Yes. The answer yes. is yes, um, and you can update review stages, but um, from what I saw playing around on iOS, it doesn't seem like the, the, the modal where it wants you to approve or return, approve or return each document is is there yet, right? So uh, I, I imagine that's something they're looking into, but I would honestly have to uh, go do a little bit of research as to what we're touching on there. Super. Okay, and then when using the app for host and person signing, can you still only do one doc at a time, or can you string them together and sign them all uh, if as if you shared the docs with them? Yes, um, and this is another just in general training misunderstanding. Uh, for example, if you're doing it on desktop and you open up a loop and you want to host the person signing, I see agents open one document at a time and host the in-person signing. You got to use your, use your group actions. Select multiple documents, open them up at once, and then when you do your host in-person signing, they'll sign all of them that you want them to sign rather than signing one and then signing you out and then you sign back in and do the next document you open up groups of documents and it will string them together so on um, the same goes for the app you would just select multiple um, to open those documents up and, and do the host in person signing very good um, all right ladies and gentlemen let's give hunter a big hand and thank you very much for an excellent presentation very thorough and by the way, we got tons of people wanting to know what is the screen sharing program that you're using? Um, well, there's a lot of fun ways to do this, and I get that question a lot too. My preferred one, if you're a Mac user who also has an Apple um, device, and, and I didn't even show you, this one's even slicker, but it's called um, Reflector. Now, that's not what I was using today, but Reflector will actually put a fake outline of your phone or tablet, which just adds kind of a, another cool element to it. And, and Reflector works through AirPlay, so you have to be on the same uh, Wi-Fi on your device and your computer. And you, it, you do have to pay like 15 bucks for Reflector too. But then you can turn on AirPlay, it will mirror your phone, and it's cordless so you can walk around. But this method that I'm doing right now for the Apple, uh, I was displaying it by using QuickTime. So I used my normal charging cord from my phone to my computer, and then I opened up QuickTime. Oops. And then I just said file, uh, new screen recording, and then I said, and then I chose my phone from the drop down next to the record button, yep. and that mirrored my phone. Very good. Right? Or not new screen recording, it's um, new movie recording is what you'd want to choose, actually. Okay. Very good. Uh, what I'm doing for the Samsung is I'm using a, a app download called Visor. Okay. Right and here. Is that, is that corded? Yes, that's corded. Uh, through your regular charging cord as well? Yes. Super. All right, so I promise you guys next week we're going to do a screen sharing um, uh, demo. We'll get some uh, different screen sharing devices, so if you guys have any suggestions, please let us know. Once again, thank you, Hunter, very much for, for your presentation. I'm going to go ahead and take um, the screen back, and you all should see my screen coming up now. All right, thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Thank you again, Hunter. Appreciate you. I'm going to go mute. Okay, very good. All right, let's talk about what is happening with our eEdge updates. We have two eEdge updates to share for you guys, okay? The first is the welcome <laughs> – it's changed once again. The welcome email, the ICW, the seller's market report, uh, these are all what we call configurable templates, configurable email templates, and they now all live in the My Account settings under um, under uh, email 
and templates. So you're going to look for email settings, then look for templates. So you guys can see here, we click on email settings. And please tell me if you need for me to go into the live environment. We're going to try to avoid doing that right now. Uh, we're going to go into email settings, and then from email settings, you'll notice you have templates. And then here's where all of your templates are going to live. So you can manage all of your emails in one place. Do it all at the same time and save yourself some time and trouble. Please let me know if you have any questions regarding that. All right, the next one, comments are now notes. So you won't see the word comments any longer. Uh, they have gone through an official name change. So um, now you have the option of saving a note to the notes section or what used to be the comments section, or you can save it to the notes and or history section. So as you all can see here, we have a history uh, tab, and when you're in the history tab, anything you put in, under history or notes in history will show up in the history tab. Anything you show in notes will show up in notes, what used to be known as the um, comments. And the difference between the two are going to be notes is just going to be quick things that you want to want to make um, quick changes on. The history itself will will stay there, and it'll follow along with any other things that you have sent um, or done within the system uh, with that particular client. All right, any questions on the two e edge updates? All right, I'm gonna go on to the next screen and, and let you all send those questions in, just in case you do have additional questions. All right, next is the ambassador membership update. So here is what's happening. You guys are the first ones to hear about this. Nobody else knows about this, so nobody else is probably doing it just yet. There is six steps in order to make you the technology ambassador in the white pages. So now the ambassadors are in the white pages. Look at that. We are somebody. Um, it, I feel like um, we just received a uh, mail. Um, for the first time. So we are somebody, ambassadors on the white pages, super excited about that. Um, first thing, the team leader, the MCA, the um, assistance of those roles and the operating partner all have the um, all have the ability to to do this process. So they're going to log in with their leadership role. They're going to, number two, click on white pages within their MyKW profile. Then they're going to go to the associate information. Every single admin should know how to do this. They're going to search for the individual who is going to be designated or is currently designated as a technology uh, ambassador. They're going to click on that person's name on step five. And then step six, scroll down and say, yes, I'm going to add you as a technology ambassador, and then save it. The reason we're doing this, one, is there's no way for us to take currently the entire list of 900-plus uh, ambassadors we have. Also, we're going to make sure that this list is now uh, one is it's, – it's a complete list. We're going to have a better designation. So we want to make sure that you all have your leadership follow this process to get you added. And we're going to give you some time to do that before we are start uh, – before we start communicating to our entire – uh, ambassador group through uh, this uh, through this means. Now, what this means is this is going to allow us to easier, easily, uh, easier identify members of the community, uh, make it easier for us to identify you all. It's going to help us to streamline communication between uh, or with our uh, technology uh, community members. It's going to allow for our te technology community community members to communicate amongst each other a lot easier. We're also going to be able to establish opportunities for levels of certification for our ambassador community. It's also going to help us to gauge interest and participation of our KW Technology community members. For example, how many people are making it to this call, exactly who is on this call, who's asking questions, who's participating. And then it's – and in doing this, we're all integrating with KW Connect, and KW Connect is going to be – most likely that module that we'll, we will use for that communication and um, kind of the same thing we're doing on the Market Center intranet but at a much, much higher level. So that this is a process. Um, you guys can get to our slides in the technology community um, as soon as uh, this presentation is complete. I will make sure they're there so that you can get these instructions. 
I see no questions, so I'm assuming um, either I'm muted, you're not hearing anything I'm saying, or this is extremely clear and step by step. If that is the case, let's move on to the next subject matter. Oh, came back. Uh, no, uh, uh, super clear. Awesome. Where do I find step two? Step two is actually down below. Once you're logged into MyKW, down below MyKW on the right uh, hand side towards the bottom is your, um, is your opportunity to click on white pages. There is still a tech coordinator role assigned, so you could uh, leave that alone. The tech coordinator role is actually a role. Uh, this is more of a group, Mike, so make sure the tech coordinator role is still assigned. That does not change. A market center can have as many ambassadors as they need, but remember, Alicia, that these ambassadors will be uh, required and expected to fulfill the role of an ambassador, understanding everything that an ambassador does and, um, and living to the level and the expectations that we will be setting forth here in the near future. Uh, Lisa asks the team leaders doing this, the MCA, assistant MCA, team leader, assistant MCA, and or operating partner. They're the only ones that have access to the white pages at this level where they'll be able to assign groups. You'll notice on screen six, the kinds of groups that we're assigning are also GPS members, farm and ranch, so that is not open to everybody. Uh, Susan says, we need to add a replacement to the technology community and the market center intranet. Uh, who do I contact? So I'm not clear on what you're saying, Susan. If, Susan, if you mean the person that is listed in the Market Center Internet as the uh, technology ambassador, let's just make sure that they're added here uh, following these six steps. Once that has been done, we will clean up the Market Center Internet or the technology Internet so you don't have to worry about that. Is there a list of uh, ambassador responsibilities, what to do now as a new ambassador? Actually, uh, yes, there is, Carla. There is a, uh, a page that I will send you to here in just a moment. And better yet, I will bring it up. It is part of our um, opening screen um, slide uh, for the technology uh, ambassador. So I will show you all that so that you can get to all of that information um, and uh, quickly uh, retrieve it. It's also uh, even better yet, it's also on the invitation that you received for today's webinar. So if you are um, received today's webinar, there are some links down there as well. And if you're a part of the Facebook technology community or the um, uh, Facebook ambassador community and or, then I also put those links in there. Lots of places. All right, great. Let's continue then. You guys are doing good so far, uh, sticking with the program. Realty Safety Month, Realtor Safety Month, you saw. Uh, how many of you all have done anything for Realtor Safety Month? If you haven't, it's not too late. Um, you know, September 1st marks the first day of a long awareness campaign, and it's aimed at increasing the safety of real estate agents. The National Association of Realtors, NAR, has dedicated a safety site for agents to gather information and resources uh, for, uh, for this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to share that with everybody so that everybody has this information. Give me one moment. All right, there is the link. Now, on this particular link, you'll find uh, resources uh, such as uh, widgets and banners that you could add to your website. And you'll notice that not all of these are specifically for real estate agents because it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to, uh, to promote on our real estate site um, safety for real estate agents. These are other ways of creating safety tips. Now remember, our role as agents is to come from contribution, is to be uh, thought of first, to serve our community, all of those things, and we can do that actually using KW Video. First of all, KW Video, if you go to KW Video or if you've read the KW blog, on the KW blog, when we talk about September Realtor Safety Month, we actually talk about a video that uh, that KW Video has created that you can do and use it your own words in. And in this video, you could share this video. Once you have completed the video, you can share the video with your sphere of agents that are not KW agents. 
this is one going to help them be aware of Realtor Safety Month and some things that maybe will help save their lives or uh, keep them um, out of harm's way. And it's another great opportunity to share the great tools that we have at KW. Some other videos that we have that you could add to your website, that you could add to your blog are uh, the Halloween quick tips, agent safety tips, baby proofing your home, 4th of July tips, burglar proofing your home, and of course if you have the full subscription of KW Video, a way that you can create your own safety videos. What a great way to come from contribution and provide great content on your website. Oh wow, Sharon, they're hosting a self-defense class in their market center tonight uh, for Realtor Safety Month. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, in the team meeting, Diana showed the video. Uh, what else? Um, that's great. Love that. And you're welcome, uh, Kathy. We're happy to share that. I want you all to go to kwvideo.com uh, and, um, and use, you get six free videos when you sign up uh, for KW Video originally. And then if you register for the year of uh, KW Video, you get unlimited videos, including all of these. How great is that? Also, what I'd like to know is while I'm talking about the next subject, what other uh, videos do you all think could be created? I'd like to know that. Uh, what are the types of videos for safety do you all think could be created? Let's share those. All right, here's some real estate safety apps. You've got Guardly. It's available on Android, BlackBerry, iPhone, Windows 7. The basic plan is free. Premium plan is $1.99 a month or $20 a year. What it does is it allows you to send an alert via phone, email, and a text. It includes your location to any emergency contacts. So, um, hopefully you are uh, have a group of people that you have uh, let know that you are going to go in this open house or meet with this person. Ice Picks, it's available on iPhone only. Download is $2.99. Uh, it's a premium only. It automatically takes a photo. It emails it with GPS map location and it emails your contacts all in one touch. So again, you could have a, a list of emergency contacts. Make sure they know where you are. Real Alert is available on both iPhone and Android. It is a paid download, $1.99. Uh, features are you can call 911 in one tap, alert a friend, sound an alarm, save details on specific on suspicious people, not spe maybe specific suspicious people, and locate the nearest hospital. And then, of course, a safe trek is available on Android. Its basic plan is free, uh, $9.95 per month. You can send a text.